Good day, everybody, and welcome once again to Aim High Ministries. My name is Mike, and if it is your first time here, I welcome you to our channel. And the question that I have for you today is this. Is it possible to be born a Christian. Now, if you're looking for a place where you can learn and grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ, and if you're looking for a place where you could actually learn the Bible in a way that you may not have learned the Bible before, make sure to subscribe right now to Aim High with Mike and Emma and hit that notification bell so that you would not miss an upload. Now, without further to say or do, let's get right into our video. Now, as I mentioned, the question is, is it actually possible to be born a Christian? And the reason why I asked that question is because growing up, I actually subscribed to the fact that I was a Christian by default. Like, my mom is a Christian. She knows a lot of Christians. I used to go to church with her every single Sunday. Although I never gave my life to Christ, I would by default consider myself a Christian if the question was to actually come up, right? So if I had to pick and choose as it related to what I actually believed in, I wouldn't check the box for agnostic, nor would I check the box for atheist. Obviously, I wouldn't check the box for being a Buddhist or a Muslim or a Hindu or any of those other religions. I was a Christian, at least by default in my eyes. But what does the Bible actually say? Now, in John chapter 3, what you would find is a very interesting dialogue between Jesus and a Jewish leader named Nicodemus. Now, I'm just going to touch on one particular verse in this chapter. John chapter 3 verses 3 says this. Jesus answered him and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So right off the bat, we see that Christ is actually alluding to the fact that one needs to be born again. And then Nicodemus goes on to actually ask Jesus, how could one actually be born again? Is it possible for man to enter back into his mother's womb? And then Jesus goes on to explain to him that no, that's not what I'm referring to. The rebirth is a spiritual birth. Now the question is this, in light of that spiritual rebirth, why do I need to be born again, right? Like, I think I'm good. I'm doing all things well. Why is it important and necessary for you and I to be born again in order to enter into the kingdom of God? And this is why. It's very, very important for us to be very careful to not label ourselves as Christian if we are not born again. Regardless of how your family tree looks like, regardless of how your community looks like, you are not a Christian unless you are born again. And the reason why you need to be born again is because your first birth was basically a death certificate. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 22 says this, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. So as you can see, there is an emphasis on being born again because in Adam all die. And when Paul here says, in Christ all will be made alive, what he's basically referring to is the fact that those who are in Christ meaning those who are born again will be made alive. So you will be made alive again in Christ, in the kingdom of God. But this could only take place if you are born again. The problem that we have, though, is that we are all born in Adam. Therefore, we actually inherit the penalty and the consequence and the actual disease and condition called sin. Therefore, we actually inherited our sin nature that has been passed down from our forefather, Adam. So this is what that means. No matter what you do, no matter your good deeds, no matter the hospitality that you show, no matter the love and care and compassion that you try to work out, you will not be able to cover the condition that you are under. You are under a death sentence outside of God. In Adam, you are infected and you are going to reap the penalty of that condition because God needs to be just. God is righteous. Therefore, because in Adam we are lawbreakers, 
because that's all we pretty much do. The Bible actually says that your good works is as filthy rags to God. That's why Jesus says in order to see the kingdom of heaven, you need to be born again and all who are in Christ will live. Now your response may be, hey Mike, I'm not as bad as that guy or that guy over here. I, I think I'm pretty, I think I'm pretty good. Now the issue with that is that is actually not consistent with your imagination. Like if we were to actually record your thoughts and put it on the screen, the question is, what would we see? That is not consistent with your motives in regards to why do you do the good that you do? Is it to be seen by men? Is it to get a promotion? That does not hide the fact that you wrestle with lust, hatred, pride, enviness, selfishness each and every single day. All of these things speak against the notion that you are righteous. Psalms chapter 51 verses 5 says this, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin my mother conceived me. Now to be brought forth in iniquity, what that actually means is to be brought forth in lawlessness, meaning just reckless. You don't have to teach a baby how to lie. You don't have to teach a young man how to steal. We do it by nature. Therefore, David here is basically alluding to the fact that he was brought forth in iniquity. No one had to teach him this. This was his condition. He goes on to say that in sin, my mother conceived me. The word sin simply means to miss the mark. And to miss the mark simply means that God actually has a target, but we cannot meet that target. And the reason why we cannot meet that target is because we are in Adam. And because we are in Adam, we fall short. And because God is just and righteous, he must deal with sin. That is why Jesus Christ came to pay the penalty on our behalf. And in him, all will receive life eternal. Outside of him, eternal life is non-existent. So the notion that we are born as believers by default because of community or family or whatever the case may be, self-righteousness is actually a lie. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verses 17 says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. If you are in Christ, all that you were, your former position in Adam, death, due to breaking the law of God and not being able to attain the righteousness of God is now nil and void because Jesus Christ is the only righteous one and his righteousness now has been imputed onto you, has been imputed onto me. He has covered us in righteousness, in holiness. Now he is able to present us to the Father. And when the Bible talks about us being new creation, what Paul actually means is that you actually receive the power of the Holy Spirit who convicts you, who changes your motive, who works on your desire, and then works upon your attitude and how you begin to grow and deal with the people of God and with the world at large. This is front and center of God's heart. And this is what God has come down to do in the likeness of his son, Jesus Christ, on our behalf. So in regards to whether or not one could be born a Christian because one may attend church, as I said, or do good things or family or community, or whatever the case may be, remember, in Adam all die, in Jesus all live, and God makes all things new when we submit ourselves to him and his righteousness. And that is the beautiful thing about Christianity. The only religion that says God, I don't have enough to offer. The only movement that preaches a gospel that puts man in the category where man actually belongs with no exaltation whatsoever and makes man fully dependent on the creator to save us as opposed to us meeting the obligations of the creator and therefore now the creator has no choice but to open the doors and save us. In that we could boast, but we have nothing to boast in. We boast in Christ alone. We boast in what God has done for us alone, and we cannot boast in ourselves, and that's the beautiful thing. Therefore, 
we are exempt from pride, from arrogance, and we could be fully grateful for the gift that God, our Father, has given unto us in order to save us. Amen. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for who you are. And I just pray, O oh Lord, that you may just help those who may not know you, that they may come to saving faith in you, that they may lay it all on the line and put their faith and trust in you, knowing, O oh God, that their position outside of you is nothing but death and decay. O oh, Heavenly Father, that you may save the brokenhearted, that you may save the sinner, that you may go after the backslider, O oh God, and win them for your glory and for your name's sake. We thank you. We honor you. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. All right, guys. Well, that's about it. I just pray that this may have helped those of you who may have struggled in some sort of way in regards to this topic. Do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to Aim High with Mike and Emma. Until next time, you already know it's all love. Peace.